Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool arcade game, video game, pinball machine repair video for you this afternoon. We're working on a pinball machine, a Bally, and uh, we need to get five sets of displays working. So I know a lot of people probably have displays in their machine that they picked up somewhere that are a little flaky. So we figured we'd do a little video and show you uh, what you can do about that. So you've got several things that can go wrong with the displays. Um, we figured we would kind of highlight some of the more common ones. Let me see what I've, I've got several here that we're going to work through. Let me see. Okay, this is a good one. So, first of all, if your Bally or Stern pinball machine has a display in it that looks like this when it's turned off, you're pretty much done. Now, you can probably still use it, but it won't look good. So everywhere, see those little black spots on the segments? The glass is burned, which means that the only way to fix that is to replace the glass. It's kind of like how you get uh, burn, burn in on your uh, CRT in a video game, an arcade game. So basically, the only way to fix that is to replace this entire glass piece, which, as you can see, is soldered on with, like, what's that, maybe 40 uh, pins. Um, so, if you've got displays that have that on it, the only way to fix it is to replace the glass. The glass costs as much as a brand new display, so it's pretty much trash. Um, you might want to hang on to it just to save, save it for parts. So you can fix some of your other ones with it. As you can see, this one is uh, pretty bad off. Um, all of the six-digit ones are the same, and the seven-digit ones are just slightly different. They just have an extra digit, obviously. So they have this little decoder chip here that uh, basically decodes the signal uh, sent to tell it with the strobe which segments to light up and all the information. So if you've got one where you've got... Uh, th these are, It isn't burnt like this, so it looks clean like this one, right? And you're getting strange numbers, like the numbers are wrong. The first thing to do is to swap another display into that same connector. Like so, say if this is player one, and it's giving you strange numbers on the display, and you think that there's a problem with the display, take out player fours or something and swap it into player one. Of course, do all this with the volt with the power off because these things run like almost 200 volts through them, which is worse than your wall, right? Um, I guess it's DC, so I guess it's not as bad as your wall, but still, don't play with it. Um, with the power off, swap the display and see if it keeps doing it. If it if the new display does it as well, then you know the problem is in the machine. If the display now looks right, well, then you know the display must have a problem. Okay, so if you've confirmed that it's definitely the display that's the problem and not the, the uh, machine that's the problem, uh, then you can go ahead and start trying to repair it. So the first thing you want to do is look at your solder joints. So um, sometimes you'll get problems on the actual pins that go into the glass, and then sometimes you'll get problems down here where the connector plugs in. Let me see if I can find one that's got bad solder on it, or one that's never been re-soldered. Oh, I think I might have just done that. Okay, so here's another one that I've got. And if you notice, it's pretty good. See the ends are a little bit lighter than the other ones. So that the, it's burnt a little bit because, you know, it usually says zero, zero whenever the game first gets turned on. So these two get lit up a little more often, so they burn a little bit. So this particular one, and if you look really closely on the bottom, this is where the connector plugs in, and it's never been re-soldered. So let's see if this will let you get a pretty close look at the pins. Let me look at it with my eyes so I can figure out what's what. Okay, yeah. Alright, so... If you look all the way down here, look at that second one. So you can barely see a little ring around the pin, a little circle. That's bad solder. So basically, that's either just barely hanging on or it's no longer actually touching the contact that it needs to touch so that the sick the electrical signal from the gets through the pin down through the pin and onto the PCB board. 
So since that's one of these chips, one of these uh, signals that goes to the decoder, you could bet your butt that this one uh, would have had some kind of crap going on on the screen. So we're going to resolder all of that. So that's the first thing you want to check. Now a lot of times you'll get one and it'll be like this. Someone's already resoldered it. So if it looks pretty decent, you can probably just leave it alone. If you keep getting problems, you might want to look at it again. But So that's the first thing you want to look at. All right. Now if you get one where one of the digits is completely missing, so if, let's say this one's missing, right? Whenever The way these work is, when it first comes into the uh, machine, it runs through these resistors here, R1, R3, R5, R7, R9, R11. See those? These resistors have a bad habit of burning up. And whenever they burn up, they go open where they're no longer connected. And so the signal won't get through for the digit. So if you've got a digit missing, check these three resistors. See if they're all similar. And check these three resistors. 100K ohms. You can tell whenever you check it with a multimeter. But um, basically they should all be similar. If you've got one that's way out of range, like if it's 350 and the other ones are 100, then you know it's probably a problem. Um, so if you've got a missing digit, check that first. Now, if uh, you have a digit that locks on a little brighter than the other ones, right? and that's what this one was doing, I'll show you here in a second. This one, digit number four, is clearly just locked on, which is messing up all the other ones. Okay, so you see how that one was locked on a little brighter. Basically, when the signal comes in for each digit, the strobe, right, it runs through these six transistors. And these six transistors travel through the board again to these six transistors. And these are linear. So basically, if that digit's messed up, it's that transistor. If that digit's messed up, it's that transistor. If that digit's messed up, it's that transistor. If that digit's messed up, it's uh, that transistor. If that digit's messed up, it's that transistor. If that digit's messed up, it's that transistor. So you can check these with a multimeter. Um, which we're going to do here in a second. So if you've got a digit that's locked on, you're almost always going to have one of these six transistors, and this, it'll be the one in order that corresponds with it, or one of these six transistors. So like if this one's locked on, it's either going to be this transistor or this transistor. Right? Um, if you get one where the digit's missing and the resistor's fine, then it could, it could also be one of these transistors. So we'll check that here in a second. Um, and whenever you, uh, if you get one where there's a segment missing. <coughs> so you can see each eight has seven different segments. So you've got the top one, that's one, the middle one, that's two, the bottom one, that's three, and then four, five, six, seven. There's seven little segments that make up each digit, right? If you get one where, this, where there's a segment missing on each one, so say, let's say the top line is missing on every one of them, then what you need to do is look at all of your solder again on the glass itself. And if you look on the back as a neat little trick, you can actually figure out which pin does which segment. And if you look, you know, you, could tr you can see all of the... It's not like this on every glass, but on most of the glasses, you can look at the back and figure out which pin is which and just kind of track it down. And you may, you may find that you've got a bad solder joint or something. So you can check that. But usually if you've got a segment missing, it's one of these uh, seven transistors here that drives the seven, seven, the seven segments. So if you've got a segment missing, it's going to be one of these. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll plug a few of these in, see what's going on with them, and then we'll come back here and try to fix it. So uh, we'll try that out. All right, we'll resolder this one real quick. It's at a kind of strange angle. But that's all for you. Might not be able to do a great job like this, but we'll try it. Just so you can get a good idea. We're just adding a little bit of solder, basically just reflowing it. Now sometimes if you do this and you, you notice that it just doesn't look good, like it's... Uh, it's not flowing good. About time to replace that tip, don't you think? 
If you notice it's not flowing good, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes you need to remove the old solder first, but usually you can just add a little bit more. And these, these three here are connected together. So you don't have to do it on purpose, but as you do it, you'll notice that they kind of flow together. That one's missing, of course. The reason that you have bad solder on these is because as you remove the connector, it kind of flexes the uh, it kind of flexes the the pins, and after doing that many times, they crack. All right, let's see what that ended up looking like. Looks pretty good. Do y'all see anything that's connected? So those three are they're supposed to be so I think that's pretty good the solder doesn't look bad on the pins of the glass so I'm gonna leave it sometimes what what you, a way to tell if you need that is if it wiggles a little bit this uh, you can see that the way they did it is there's a screw through the bottom of the board into this little holder that holds the glass in place if that is cracked or if that screw is missing then it'll you're getting a lot of wobble out of this and you'll see a lot of those break loose but we don't have that problem so on to the next problem all right so now that we've resoldered it remember it's the fourth digit which is actually the hundreds digit so that's like the ones digit the tens digit the hundreds digit right so we've got it's either this transistor or it's this transistor because it's stuck on if it was missing we'd look at the, re the uh, resistors so uh, I've got my uh, multimeter set on diode check and so on something like this it's real simple you just uh, the trickiest part is I guess I can do it from the top Hopefully you can see this. So all you want to do is you're going to put one pin on whatever's the base and the other pin on whatever's the what is it the anode and the cathode or the collector and the emitter. All right, so this one we're getting some weird stuff. Let's see here. We should be getting between four and six. Let's see. I'm not getting anything good. All right, so I'm doing. I just jumped over to one of the other ones that we think is good, and so see if I'm getting 0.6 between this pin and this pin, and then on the other one, I'm getting 0.6. So that's kind of what you would usually see. So if we check this one, all right, there we go. So we're getting a little better connection. 0.6, and then 0.6 on the other one. So this one is reading very similar to the one that's working. So that that uh, transistor is probably fine might be bad but it's probably fine right so let's jump back here to these ones that are a little the other set right we'll push them all straight so we can get to them all right so we'll do this one that we think is good so you notice I've switched the leads around so now I've got the red one on the center leg and the black one on the one of the outside legs so we're getting 0.6 now on the other one same thing 0.6 so that's on one that we think is good so if we move over to our one that we're suspect about 0.853 that's not 0.6 and then right here 0.866 that's not 0.6 people so this one is giving us a different reading than the other one so see if we test this one on this side that we think is good same thing 0.6 0.6. Generally, if you're doing a transistor, you want it to be between 0.4 and 0.6. If it's a little high, that's fine. 
especially on one like this. See, I just checked this one and it's almost identical to this one, but this one's all screwed up. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I just checked this one and this one, but this one's way different, you know, it's 0.8. It's not even close, people. So what's that tell you? This transistor is probably bad. So I'm gonna pull it out and we'll look at it and uh, see if we can swap another one in. All right, so I pulled that sucker out of there with the solder iron and the solder sucker. And it is, here's what it says on it, okay? It's a Motorola, all right? So it says, well, wait a minute. I don't know that it's a Motorola. It says F585-33. 835 right so that's like their part numbers so they don't want you knowing what this is so basically what it is is an MPS A42 so if you've got an MPS A42 that's what you need to order for that these particular six um, since I've got so many displays that have burnt things I always just take one off another display now if you've got new ones they're real cheap they're only like a dime pop them in but we don't have any in right now so I'm just gonna put another used one in there but I'll test it to make sure it's right before I put it in so I'm gonna swap that now and then we'll put it back in the game and see if that fixed it for us okay so our fourth digit that was locked on or was too bright is now fine everything looks good right and so we've plugged in another one too and check out what this one's giving us if you look real close the top left segment on each one is like kind of trying to light up right so we've kind of got like a segment problem right and it's on all of them so usually whenever you get gibberish on everything you're looking at a problem with the the chip so we're gonna we're gonna check that out now it could be that that top left segment transistor is shorted on or something and doing something weird but the way it it looks to me like that would just always be on and then the other stuff would be doing what it's supposed to do. So uh, we'll check it out. All right, so if you notice, the decoder chip actually has a hole blown right through the top of it. I noticed this earlier on this one, but I forgot that I had one like that and put it in the machine anyway. Probably wouldn't have been smart to plug that in, but hey, we've already done it now. But uh, you see the hole in it? Bam, not good. So that chip is kind of expensive i think it's five or six bucks but guess what we could take it off of one of the ones that we have that the glasses burn on right so uh we'll pull that chip out and swap it you know, i'm also going to check these seven right because that top left one was doing something weird so it could have just been that this chip something shorted i'm sure things are shorted but it could have been that something in the chip was making it do that um or it could be that the chip's obviously screwed up, and one of these transistors is screwed up, so I'm going to check both and go ahead and swap the chip. All right, folks, so as you can see, replaced the chip, brought it right back. We put it in a socket. Let me show you. I put it in a socket so that if uh, there's ever another problem. Another reason I did that was because I was using a used chip. So it might have not been any good off of the other board. There's really not an easy way to test them besides just putting it in a in a display. Uh, but it worked, so we're good. Now the, on, the last one, we've found another one that works. But you can see that on the left, see how the digit's a little weak? I don't know how much this shows up on video, but that, that digit's a little weak just because it's burnt. Um, we found another good one here. All right. And then we found this one, which has a real interesting problem. See that little dot there? If you look real close, that's a short inside the glass. So that's yet another problem that you can't really fix. It's inside the glass, so you're done. And uh, unfortunately, it looks fine. Everything else is fine on it. It's just that one little dot. But, you know, it'll probably get worse and worse. But uh, So that glass is basically no good. Um, so we're going to find another one to swap in. I didn't find any that had a bad resistor. I wanted to show you that. But if you get one where just one whole digit's gone, you've probably got one of those resistors bad. And I looked it up. They're 100, 100K. So they're 100K, which is 100,000, right? 100,000 ohms. So if they're 98,000 ohms or they're 104,000 ohms, you're fine. You can leave it. But if you test it and it's 350,000 ohms, then, you know, that's probably your problem. That's why your digit's not working. Um, 
but hopefully that'll show you how to fix a couple uh, common problems that pop up with them. I guess we only fixed a couple, but uh, we kind of ran through all of the, the other things that it could be and showed you uh, how to get them back up and going and showed you how to resolder the uh, connectors. So uh, if you have any questions, just comment below. Um, we didn't get any that were too crazy this time where we had to work through too much stuff, but hopefully that'll help you if you've got one that's acting up. And uh, give us a thumbs up for taking the time to film it for you and walk through it a little bit. Leave your comments below, and we'll see you on the next video.